Most Christians are dismissive when it's suggested that the Mandela effect might even be a real phenomenon. But when it's suggested that the supernatural changes could possibly include the Bible, they are adamantly opposed. Most Christians hold to the view that providential preservation is clearly taught in the scripture. Such promises like thy word is forever settled in heaven seem to clearly indicate that the scripture is impervious to such an influence as the Mandela effect. But what if there was a variety of prophecies that seemed to indicate that this event was foretold by God, thereby either modifying or even nullifying the promises of providential preservation? Additionally, what if there was many within Orthodox Christianity who hold to the fact that the teaching of Scripture does not clearly indicate providential preservation? This position makes the distinction between the term Scripture and the terms Word of God. They hold that although the Word of God is immutable and unchangeable, the Scriptures are not. And so we read in John 5.39 where Jesus highlights this distinction by saying, You search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are these which testify of me. Revelation 13.7, we see both power and authority being granted to the Antichrist to wage war against the saints. Could it be possible that this broad latitude extended by God would include a lying sign and wonder such as the Mandela effect? The devil doesn't have the power to change the Bible unless God gives it to him, and Revelation 13 seems to clearly indicate that he might have. But if there was one prophecy that seemed to describe this event with crystal clear accuracy, it would be Daniel 7.25. Could times and laws mentioned here actually mean space-time and the law of God? Perhaps it does. Did Amos in chapter 8 prophesy about a famine of the word that would take place in the last days? It appears he did. And what of Revelation 22.10, which also could be interpreted to mean that any providential preservation that was operating might be lifted in the last days. The word seal is a word that means a mark as to protect from Satan. It is then modified by the word not. Therefore, the scripture seems to be saying, do not protect the prophecies of the book from Satan. And what of 2 Thessalonians 2, where Paul is seen ascribing to a created being the exclusive domain of someone having all power? If the full counsel of God would clearly hold that God alone has all power, then what would the magnitude of the signs and wonders need to be like in order for the Holy Spirit to inspire Paul to use such exalted imagery to describe the Antichrist. Could it be in Revelation 13 that those who cry, who can make war with him, would say so because he wields the power to alter time, space, and even the scriptures? And of course, in Enoch chapter 80, we read these words. And in those days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, and their seeds shall be tardy on their lands and fields. And all things on the earth shall alter, and shall not appear in their time. And the rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. And in those times, the fruits of the earth shall be backward. Now for most people, there is a very vivid memory of bananas growing down, not up. And in the slide on your screen now, the image on the right, is an example of what we call residual evidence. Only those who have spent little time researching this phenomenon would dare to suggest that there is some reasonable explanation for this picture. Those who love the Lord and His Word and have prayed and asked the Holy Spirit for guidance and have spent years in intense study of this evidence know differently. Find out for yourself. Take a little time to research this before you make a final decision. Head on over to Wake Up or Else, and be sure to send us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. God bless.